got nothing. <laughs> no idea. Inner and outer. It's like a reserve and like working fan or something. White brown fan. You are so close. Baby cat. <laughs> An adult cat. The answer is visceral and subcutaneous fat. How about this second? Visceral and subcutaneous fat. And no, my microphone was not plugged up because my cameraman and I weren't utilizing full brain capacity. How is it that we all want to either lose fat or avoid getting it, yet we don't know anything about it? Imagine you are the gosh darn master sergeant and you have your entire battalion in front of you and they're waiting on your voice to guide them on the enemy. And you say, we have an enemy out there. They, uh, they look like this. Now go out there and fight. What? In order to defeat the enemy, you gotta know the enemy. This is why sports teams watch films during the playoffs. This is why military have intelligence meetings. And this is why you are here. Our basis of what we know about fat is elementary at most. Eat too much and it appears. Run miles and it disappears. The basic narrative about how fat works is one of the reasons we're still fat here in 2020. To, what year is it? Don't get me wrong though, fat isn't a complex topic, it's just misunderstood. Like most evil villains. Subcutaneous and visceral fat. Unless you went to college and took a very particular class, you may have never heard of this. Subcutaneous fat is the fat that's right under our skin and it accounts for up to 80% of total body fat. Editing Johnny is gonna put something off Google Images so that it's clear for you. And check this out, it's right above the muscle and the muscle uses it for energy, which is kinda cool, but we're not talking about energy right now. Just want to remind you of how calculated your body is. Let's talk about the location of visceral fat. Visceral fat is the type of fat that's right, lo it, it's in our midsection. It's located in our abdomen. You see, it's located in our abdomen. It's commonly referred to as abdominal fat. There's a lot of insight we can get from this. Let's break it down. First off, those of us with a dad bod or bigger middle regions don't have bigger stomachs. Obese individuals don't have bigger stomachs. They just have more fat in their mesentery. Johnny, what the heck? It's a mesentery, I'm glad you asked. So in this area, in our midsection, we have organs. The intestines, the pancreas, the liver, they aren't just in there floating around, they have to be anchored down. The things that are anchoring them down to our inner abdominal walls are called mesenteries. Some refer to the mesentery as just one big organ, some say it's multiple organs, depending on which lab coatist you talk to. Either way, the mesentery is where majority of our visceral fat is stored. Here's a cutaway of the body. Don't worry about anything other than this part right here. That yellowish stuff is the fat of the mesentery, and it's anchoring our intestines. As you could imagine, the more fat that accumulates here, the further out the stomach protrudes. Visceral fat can account to up to 20% in men and 8% in women. Men tend to put on more abdominal fat than women and women tend to put on more subcutaneous fat in general. Them thighs don't lie. All right, we understand the fat in certain locations, but what makes them different is even more important. First off, let's establish something here. You and I, let's establish this. We need fat. In college, I was taught that in order for us humans to operate functionally on a daily basis, that men need two to 5% body fat at least, and women need at least 10 to 12%. This is known as essential body fat. However, it wouldn't be totally wise to aim for these percentages because that doesn't mean the body will function optimally. It just means we'll run, kind of like when you're driving your car and you got your engine light on. The joint is still run, but that engine ain't healthy. I bring this up because it is a testament to understand we need fat to function. Fat isn't just sitting there. This review states, fat acts as an active organ influencing our appetite, energy balance, immunity, insulin sensitivity, angiogenesis, which is the formation of new blood vessels, blood pressure, lipid, AKA fat metabolism, and homeostasis, which is the state of balance in the body. So a lot going on, but Here's what's crazy. Obesity is known as a chronic low-grade inflammatory state. Inflammation isn't a bad thing, it's how the immune system operates. However, when we can't shut that system off efficiently, that is gonna cause some of that ongoing low-grade chronic inflammation, which is detrimental to our health in the long term. So let's spin it like this. I'm walking down the street, and no, better yet, I'm riding my longboard down the street, and some guy jumps out of the alley and jumps on top of me and beats the brakes off. My body would be pretty bruised up, and I would have these bruises. Those bruises represent the immune system trying to work to heal itself. The redness, the swelling, the pain, and the heat that's coming from that bruise are all indicative of the immune system at work. Technically, this would be like high-grade inflammation. That doesn't really exist, but this helps us to paint the picture of what it means to be really inflamed. So low-grade inflammation would be when the immune system is activated and circulating when there isn't a serious threat. That becomes damaging over time, and a lot of lab coders say that is the basis of all disease. That is the state we are in 
when we're obese. Specifically in the abdominal area, you are going to be hard pressed to find research not linking excessive visceral fat to increased mortality, insulin resistance, and inflammation. This sounds real nasty too. V v visceral. As this study states, a close relationship exists between high morbidity and visceral fat rather than subcutaneous fat. So now we know that visceral fat is more villainy than subcutaneous fat. Now, if you're someone that's in the dad bod territory or you're on your way there, all hope is not lost. It never really is. There's there's always hope. As the first study from earlier states, visceral adipose tissue is more sensitive to weight reduction than subcutaneous. I believe that is because subcutaneous fat is more of our primary way of storing fat, while visceral fat is more of a sign that we kind of reach capacity of our subcutaneous fat. So in theory, the last fat to come on is the first fat to come off. But what do you make of all of this? What do you think? How do you think that works? Let me know down below that I miss anything. Is there something you want to go deeper on? Talk to me. I'll talk back. If you got any value out of this, I'd greatly appreciate a like, I'm gonna get it out your way.